Good afternoon, welcome you to this session. Uh, last class we discussed the stagnation properties, the stagnation pressure, stagnation temperature and the stagnation densities, their definition and the expressions for them. So, if we again recapitulate uh, those stagnation properties, you see that we have already derived that stagnation for example, the stagnation enthalpy is defined like this, 0 is the suffix for the stagnation quantities is h plus the velocity v square by 2, the dynamic here. And with the aid of a perfect gas or an ideal gas as the system which obeys the ideal uh, gas equation of state that P is equal to rho R T and for an isentropic process as you know P by rho to the power gamma, gamma is the ratio of specific heat at constant, we derived the ratios between the stagnation temperatures T0 by T is 1 plus gamma, this is this recapitulation of the earlier thing, Mach number square of the Mach number, where this Mach number Me is defined as the flow velocity divided by the acoustic velocity or speed of sound, which is nothing but root over gamma R T. This is also for an ideal gas as the system or the flowing medium. Similarly, for a perfect gas P0 by P, the ratio of the stagnation pressure to the local pressure is given by gamma minus 1 by 2 m a square to the power gamma by gamma minus 1 and rho 0 by rho the ratio of density, stagnation density to the local density is 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m a square 1 by gamma minus 1. So, this have been derived with the aid of these two equations. So, constraints for these definitions are like this, the flow should be isentropic. That means, the stagnation temperature, stagnation pressure, not stagnation, in stagnation temperature isentropicness is not important, but for stagnation pressure and the stagnation density, the flow should be isentropically brought to rest. Okay? Now, let us realize this situation physically. For example, if we have a large reservoir, for example, the flow commences from a large reservoir. If we have a variable area duct, the flow takes place through a variable area duct. Let this is the direction of flow. And if this is a large reservoir, a large reservoir, and if this duct and the reservoir is insulated, both are insulated, that means Q is equal to 0. There is no Q heat interactions. It neither comes out nor goes in. And if we consider the flow to be invisible flow, that means the fluid flowing is in invisible fluid, that means free from frictional effect, then this flow is an isentropic flow. Then for this kind of isentropic flow, the conditions at the reservoir where the fluid is at rest are typically the stagnation conditions, that means temperature corresponds to T0. The enthalpy in the reservoir when the fluid was at rest corresponds to H0, the pressure is P0 and the density is rho 0. And the most important thing is that at any section where the pressure is P, temperature is T, corresponding density is rho and velocity is V, the ratios are given by this. This is the energy equation which is valid if there is no heat flow out or into the system. The enthalpy plus the velocity head and the reservoir V is 0 has to be constant. So, there is no restriction whether the flow will be reversible or not, the frictional effect will be there or not. So, therefore, this equation for this equation only constant is the adiabaticness of the flow that means the flow should be adiabatic. And with the aid of the perfect gas equation we can derive this equation. This is because for a perfect gas we know H can be expressed as Cpt plus some constant arbitrary constant. Cp times the temperature. So, Cp times the temperature, enthalpy, specific enthalpy. Okay? So, with the help of this we can derive that. So, stagnation temperature does not require the condition for isentropicness, but stagnation pressure and stagnation density must require the condition for isentropicness. So, stagnation properties as a whole are defined those properties which would arise if the fluid were brought to rest isentropically. That means, in the flow situations, in an isentropic flow, the 
fluid where the fluid is at rest, the situations or the parameters refer to stagnation parameters. These are the stagnation parameters. We can find out the velocity. For example, V square is 2 H 0 minus H or V is equal to root over 2 H 0 minus H. A simple condition. That means, by virtue of the enthalpy difference. For a perfect gas, we can write C p T 0 minus T. So, therefore, at any section, the velocity V is achieved by virtue of its change in the stagnation temperature. Stagnation temperatures are simply the index of the energy or the enthalpy in case of an ideal gas. Okay. Another very important condition arises in this isentropic flow is the sonic condition. That is another important condition. What is meant by sonic condition? That means that any section in the duct, the flow situation be such that the velocity of flow becomes equal to the acoustic speed or velocity of sound at that section corresponding to the particular properties prevailing at that section. That means, the local properties of P t rho, the velocity of sound. Velocity of sound is given by root over gamma t. So, the local section or the locality where V attains A is known as the sonic condition. There the Mach number of flow becomes equal to 1. So, sonic condition is a very important condition and sections where the fluid flow achieves the speed of sound with Mach number 1 and the properties at that location is are referred as sonic properties and they are usually or conventionally denoted with an asterisk as the superscript. For example, P star is the known as sonic pressures. So, pressure P star that is the sonic condition, sonic pressure. What is meant by sonic pressure? That is the pressure at the section where the sonic velocity is reached. Similarly, T star, similarly rho star, just like P 0, T 0, rho 0 with 0 as the suffix conventionally represents the stagnation properties, asterisk with a superscript represent the sonic properties. That means, these are the properties at the section where the sonic velocity that the velocity of sound is reached by the velocity of the fluid. So, to derive an expression of those quantities, it is very simple that if we put m a Mach number is equal to 1 here. That means, if we put Mach number is equal to 1, then the t correspond to t star. Then what is the value of t 0 by t star? We can find out the ratio then. Then we can find out t 0 by t star becomes equal to, if you put Mach number is equal to 1, 2 plus gamma minus 1, that means gamma plus 1 by 2. So, simply it becomes gamma plus 1 by 2, because Mach number is 1, it is free from Mach number, Mach number is put 1. So, similarly for a perfect gas, we can write P 0 by P star is gamma plus 1 by 2 raised gamma by gamma minus 1. Similarly, rho 0 by rho star is equal to gamma plus 1 by 2 to the power 1 by gamma minus 1. So, this defines the so sonic properties, the ratios of stagnation to sonic properties, where the flow velocities has reached the acoustic velocities. Now, what is the flow velocity? V, v star is equal to A star and is equal to gamma R T star. All star or asterisk, whatever you call, we call it a star. So, with a star at the superscript means the condition where the Mach number 1 has reached. So, at that condition the velocity of the fluid flow and the sound speed at that condition is also given as a asterisk mark star A star is root over gamma R T star. All right. So, we can find out this T star is T 0 2 by gamma plus 1. So, we can also write in terms of the stagnation property T 0 T star is T 0 into 2 by gamma plus 1. So, one can express also, this is a little algebraic manipulation, the V star or A star becomes equal to gamma R T 0 2 by gamma plus 1. So, when the Mach number 1 is reached, the sonic properties are defined like this as a ratio of the stagnation properties like this. So, these are known as sonic properties. Now, after this, any question? So, after this, we will see the very important thing, we will come to an important uh, deductions or important problem that effects of area variation, effects of 
you write this is the topic of the day effects of area variation which is very important and interesting area variation on flow properties on flow properties on flow properties in an isentropic flow in an isentropic flow in an isentropic flow effects of area variation on flow properties in an isentropic flow let us consider a general situation of an isentropic flow like this that means the duct is adiabatic and we consider an inviscid flow that means free from irreversibility that is a reversible adiabatic flow isentropic flow where the area is varying this is a varying area duct so we consider an analysis for a one dimensional flow where velocities pressures all are functions of the direction of the flow but is uniform across uniform across a section so now you see that in this case if we write the equation of motion equation of motion equation of motion for an one dimensional inviscid flow simple equation of motion that is your Euler's equation Euler's equation Euler's equation which is the equation of motion for inviscid flow equation of motion for inviscid flow in one dimensional can be written in a differential form dp is equal to minus rho v dv in a differential form we can write rho v dv so this is the inertial term and this is the pressure this is the pressure this can be found out by making a force balance p p plus dp and taking this is the inertia force and this is the pressure force it is balanced by inertia force is equal to pressure force because there is no viscous force so dp is minus rho v dv if you recollect it is the differential form of your euler's equation for one dimension will flow that means the equation of motion for an inviscid fluid minus rho v dv now if we divide both the sides by rho v square we get dp by rho v square is very simple deduction is minus dv by v now continuity if we write the continuity equation continuity means the integral form of the continuity not differential form the bulk continuity equation that is the bulk bulk form bulk continuity equation we can write the rho density into area into velocity that means we are considering the one dimensional approach that means at any section the velocity is uniform across the section area is the cross sectional area at that section and rho is its density this is equal to constant this is the bulk continuity for a one dimensional flow yeah, that any section rho a v v is the uniform velocity at that section rho is the uniform density and area of cross section the product of these three is constant that means the mass flow rate this implies the mass flow rate now in a differential form this can be written d rho by rho plus d a by a is very simple deduction d v by v is zero from continuity equation in this differential form we can substitute dv by v from here and we get dp by rho v square is equal to minus dv by v is d rho by rho plus d a by a that means d rho by rho plus d a sorry by a okay all right and next we can write this dp by rho this we can write dp if i take this uh, d rho by rho d a by a d a by a in one side we can write d p by rho v square minus d rho by rho or we can write d a by a or or we can write is equal to d p by rho v square we take as common d p by rho v square into 1 minus v square divided by d p by d rho ok so again we can write d a by a or is equal to d p by rho v square now what is this value d p by d rho in an isentropic flow a square very good that is this is equal to a square 
and v square by a square is Mach number square. All right. Again, we can write another equation or in terms of v d a by a, since d p by rho v square, d p by rho v square is minus d v by v, you see from the equation of motion, d p by rho v square is minus d v by v. So, we can write also minus d v by v. So, these two equations are very, very important equations, these two, these two, these two equations are very important equations in compressible fluid flow. So, what do these equations indicate you see now? These two equations indicate that when Mach number is less than 1, that means subsonic flow, subsonic flow, when Mach number is less than 1, that means in case of subsonic flow, you see that d a and d p have the same sign, d a and d p has the same sign and d a and d v has the opposite sign. That means, for d a greater than 0, d a less than 0 for example, d p less than 0 and d v greater than 0 or d a greater than 0 d p d a greater than 0 d p greater than 0 and d v less than d a greater than 0 means d v less than 0. What does it mean? That means, when m a less than 1 in subsonic flow, when area decreases, that means d a less than 0, d a d p is positive, that means d a and d p are in the same sign. When area decreases, that means area less than 0, d p also less than 0, that means the pressure also decreases, but velocity increases. Similarly, when area increases, that d a greater than 0, then pressure also increases and accordingly, these two are the opposite signs, so pre accordingly the velocity decreases and it is the usual happenings that we already know, which take place in case of an incompressible flow. So, this qualitative trend with which we are, uh, which we are acquainted with in case of incompressible flow remains the same in case of subsonic flow when Mach number less than 1. But what happens in case when Mach number is greater than 1? From this we can write when Mach number is greater than 1, when just the reverse, you see when Mach number is greater than 1, that is supersonic flow, supersonic flow you just see from the equation when Mach number is greater than 1, we see that when d a is less than 0, d p is because this is negative, Mach number greater than 1. So, when d a is less than 0, d p is greater than 0. That means, when d a is less than 0, d p is greater than 0, d p is greater than 0 because this is negative. Similarly, when this is negative, when d a is less than 0, d v is greater than 0. That means, d v is greater than 0 and d v is less than 0. I am sorry, d v is less than 0. Similarly, when d a is greater than 0, just the opposite from here we can write, but again we see when d a is greater than 0, so it has to be positive, this is negative, d p is less than 0. So, d p is less than 0 and d v is greater than 0. That means, it is just the reverse, when area decreases, the pressure increases and the velocity decreases. Well, when the area increases, then what happens? The pressure decreases and the velocity increases, just the reverse from that of the subsonic flow. Let us then see that in, therefore, we see that the change in area in case of subsonic flow and supersonic flow has the reverse effect, has the reverse effect. Now, we know the device nozzle. What is the nozzle by definition in the flow of a fluid? In the fluid flow, nozzle is a device where dv velocity increases, dv is greater than 0 and 
d p is less than 0, where the pressure is decreased and velocity is increased. Now, in case of a subsonic flow, we see the nozzle action in fluid flow takes place, that means the velocity increases and pressure decreases when area decreases, that means a convergent duct, that means a convergent duct, a convergent duct, this is the d in case of Mach number less than 1, that means subsonic flow. That means, in a subsonic flow, a nozzle is a convergent duct, where d a less than 0, this is a convergent duct, convergent duct. But if you make a convergent duct for a supersonic flow, it will not act as a nozzle. In case of a supersonic flow, you see the nozzle action, that means the pressure decrease of pressure and increase of velocity will take place when d a is greater than 0. That means, in case of a sorry, in case of a supersonic flow, that means when m a, m a greater than 1, this is the direction of flow, a divergent duct, a divergent duct, a divergent duct act as a, that means in case of supersonic flow, act as a nozzle. Therefore, we see that while a convergent duct act as a nozzle in case of subsonic flow, a divergent duct where the area increases acts as a super nozzle in case of a supersonic flow. The reverse happen in case of diffusers. Diffusers are those ducts where the velocity of the fluid decreases and the pressure of the fluid increases. That means, d p greater than 0 and d v less than 0. This is the process of diffusion where the pressure of the fluid increases while the velocity decreases and the duct where it happens so is known as diffuser. Now, in case of a subsonic flow, you see that the increase in pressure and decrease in velocity is associated with an increase in area. That means, a diffuser is a divergent duct in case of a subsonic flow. That means, this is the direction of flow. That means, in case of a subsonic flow, subsonic flow, subsonic flow. So, a diffuser is a divergent duct, divergent duct, where d a greater than 0, here it is also d a greater than 0, so d a. But in case of a supersonic flow, you see that process of diffusion, where d p is greater than 0 and d v is less than 0, is associated with d a less than 0. That means, in case of a supersonic flow, this is the direction of the flow, that means, when m a greater than 1, that means, in case of a supersonic flow, that means, in case of a supersonic flow, d a less than 0 is, that means, a convergent duct acts as, convergent duct acts as a diffuser. So, therefore, we see as our convention for the incompressible flow, this holds good equally for a subsonic flow that where a convergent duct is a nozzle and divergent duct is a diffuser, but for a supersonic flow a divergent duct act as a nozzle and a convergent duct is acting as a or acts as a diffuser, convergent duct act as a diffuser in case of a supersonic flow. So, therefore, we see for a supersonic flow if we have to have a nozzle that nozzle action then we have to have a divergent duct. Now, a situation where the fluid has to, for example, increase its velocity continuously from a reservoir, a stagnation condition, continuously up to the supersonic region. That means, initially the Mach is equal to 0. If I want a fluid at stagnant from a stagnant condition to reach a supersonic velocity, that means, continuous increase of fluid velocity takes place with a continuous decrease in pressure. Then what happens in the subsonic region to make the nozzle action, we will have to make a convergent duct. But when the fluid velocity will reach sonic, after that if we want still expansion, that means decrease in pressure and increase in velocity, we will have to provide a divergent duct, because we know that in case of supersonic flow, in case of supersonic flow, a divergent duct for here acts as a where it is here acts as a nozzle. In case of supersonic flow, nozzle is a divergent duct. In case of subsonic flow, it is a convergent duct. So, therefore, from a very low velocity or 
from exactly 0, max 0, v almost 0, if we want to continuously increase the velocity up to a supersonic level, that means m a greater than 1, we will have to provide both convergent and divergent duct. In the convergent portion here, the subsonic nozzle, it is subsonic nozzle, subsonic nozzle where subsonic nozzles where Mach number is less than 1 and this is known as, this is subsonic nozzle, this is known as supersonic nozzle where Mach number is greater than 1 and the area in between which is the minimum area where the area remains constant and becomes minimum, this is known as the throat of this nozzle, throat portions where Mach number is equal to 1 is reached, Mach number is equal to 1 is reached. Upstream of this side, the convergent duct where the nozzle action takes place that means dv greater than 0 and dp less than 0 which is the subsonic nozzle and the downstream of the throat sections, the Mach from Mach number 1, the Mach number increases, this is the Mach number less than 1 region that means supersonic flow, here also dv greater than 0 and dp less than 0. So, this type of duct where fluid at a velocity very low, that means Mach number much low uh, corresponding to subsonic region, it may be even 0 from a stagnation uh, condition or situation increases continuously up to supersonic velocity is a convergent divergent duct and it is known as convergent. Okay, any question you can ask convergent divergent nozzle. dp greater the less than 0, dv greater than 0, I am sorry, dv greater than 0, very good, dv greater than 0 here, yes, all right, okay, this is known as con convergent divergent nozzle. This is sometimes known as d level nozzle. This d level is the name of a scientist who first introduced his, his name is uh, Carl G. P. D. Level. So, Carl G. P. D. Level is the man or scientist D. Level who first introduced this type of nozzle in relation to a steam turbine. It was first used according to the, the late 19th century. He introduced this. So, according to his name, this is known as D. Level nozzle or convergent divergent nozzle. Now, this section, throat section where the area remains constant, this sonic condition is achieved. How we can prove this? It is very simple. We can prove. Please ask any questions if you want to ask. Please. What, what happened? Any question? Please, you ask me. Now, you see that from this equation, it is clear that when Mach number equal to 1, dA by A is 0. So, now from this equation it is clear that d a becomes 0 when Mach number equal to 1 or when d v equals to 0. That means, there is no change in the flow velocity. So, Mach number essentially becomes 1 when d a is equal to 0. That means, this, from this we can tell that in case of a convergent divergent nozzle, this is the section where <coughs> Mach number 1 is achieved associated with this d a is equal to 0. This is the section. Okay. But <coughs> at the same time, we see that this d a 0 may be achieved without the Mach number becoming 1. That means, Mach number may be less than 1, greater than 1 when d v is equal to 0 achieved. What is the physical significance of it? That means, a throat area may be there even without reaching the Mach number 1 but satisfying the condition d v is equal to 0. This has, this, these are very simple things. Let us consider completely a supersonic, a subsonic flow with a convergent divergent duct. A convergent, let us consider a convergent divergent duct, convergent divergent duct in a subsonic flow, in a subsonic, in a subsonic flow that means m a less than 1. So, this is the flow direction. So, if we see the graph for m a, you will see like this, let, let this is the m a is equal to 1 line, m a is equal to 1. So, initially the velocity increases in this duct, 
that means the Mach number initially increase, the Mach number this is 1, the velocity increase, then what will happen? The velocity will reach its maximum here, Mach number and then it will go on decreasing. That means it is either the graph of Mach number or velocity to a scale. So, this is the qualitative trend of the Mach number. So, Mach number will be always below 1. So, this convergent divergent duct will act as a nozzle come diffuser. That means the velocity will increase and decrease. What will be the pressure? Just the reverse. Pressure will first decrease if we draw the pressure graph. So, pressure will decrease and reach the minimum value and will increase like that. So, this is the pressure graph. So, flow velocity and Mach number will follow like that. That means, it will the convert first convergent part, the first upstream convergent part will act as a nozzle. So, this part is the nozzle where the velocity or the Mach number increases and the pressure decreases. Mach number is not necessarily reaching 1, entirely it is a subsonic flow, then the maximum velocity is attained at the throat. That means, dV is 0 is associated with dA is 0. Well, and then the rest, the last rest downstream part which is the divergent duct, the velocity decreases and the pressure increases. This typical section is known as venturi meter. This is also the name of the scientist who first devised this type of duct in measuring the flow of fluid in a fluid circuit. You know the venturi meter is one of the very accurate flow measuring instruments. So, venturi meter, convergent and divergent duct. A similar thing happens in case almost in case of a convergent divergent duct, for example, a convergent divergent duct, convergent divergent duct, okay, in a supersonic, yes, well, in a supersonic flow where m a greater than 1. Please, yes, here. Here, uh, this figure, yes, sir, previous, case. previous case where uh, D level nozzle, yes, sir. yes. So, sir, if it reaches the throat, it has MA equal to 1. one. So, sir, how can we ensure now that is a critical point? How that can is, we ensure that uh, yes. it will flow in supersonic region? Yes, that? yes. So, it can flow in subsonic also. No, it cannot flow in the subsonic region, that I will come afterwards. So, whenever the Mach 1 is reached, then if you apply a divergent duct. Then from Mach 1, a divergent duct will always expand, that means the velocity will always increase. That means from Mach 1, it cannot reach other way in a subsonic region. That means you want to tell why not from Mach 1, it will go to the subsonic velocities. That means it will act as a diffuser, it cannot go like that. It will be because Mach 1 is reached here, when the Mach 1 is reached, here Mach 1 is reached dA by A is 0. So, when dA by A increased from Mach 1, it goes into the I will discuss that afterwards. In isentropic flow calculations, you will see it cannot come back again to the subsonic region, it will automatically go to the supersonic region. It will automatically go, it cannot come back again to the subsonic region. When the critical condition is reached, it depends upon the pressure here. If you put the this pressure will be such that it will go on expanding. That means this pressure will be less than this pressure always in this case. Because this will be designed in such a way that this pressure will be less than this pressure and it will go on expanding. That means the pressure will go on decreasing and the velocity will go on increasing. This will be made clear afterwards when I will discuss the isentropic flow situation. It is a good question, I understand. But whenever the critical condition is reached, then if you apply or if you provide a divergent duct, the flow will be always reaching the supersonic, uh, supersonic situation. There is no other way out. It cannot go back to again to the subsonic region. This will be clear when I will discuss the isentropic flow situation. Okay. Then what we are discussing? Uh, well, then convergent divergent duct in a supersonic flow when m a is greater than 1. This is also very simple. That means, if totally the flow is totally the flow is m a is uh, greater than 1 in the then the flow direction is like this. Then it will be like this if m a 1 is this line. M A is equal to 1. The flow is initially what will be there? The, this will be this will act as a diffuser. That means the velocity will be decreasing. And this part will act as a nozzle. That means this will be accelerating. So, initially there will be a decelerating flow. This is the Mach number graph. Let this is the Mach number and this is the Mach number graph. So, velocity will decrease initially and then a divergent duct velocity will increase entirely in the subsonic region because this is the Mach 1. 
supersonic region and sorry supersonic region and similarly the pressure will follow like that when this velocity will increase initially the pressure decrease the pressure will increase because initially it is a diffuser and then the pressure will decrease. So, this is the for example, this is the pressure. So, this is the pressure graph. So, that it is not necessarily that in a convergent divergent duct the critical condition has to be reached at the throat. Here d a 0 is associated with d v 0, d v 0 or d p 0. That means, the maximum or minimum of the velocities are achieved depending upon whether the flow is subsonic or supersonic. Similarly, the minimum or maximum accordingly just with the reverse sign pressure is associated with. But when the flow is changes from sonic to sub supersonic, then d a is equal to 0 is associated with m a is equal to 0. That means, the Mach number reaches its maximum there. Okay. That means, the Mach number is equal to 1, not reaches its maximum, I am sorry, the Mach number is equal to 1. Sorry, d a is 0, the Mach number reaches 1. That means, it is well the sonic condition. Yes, the interesting question is that it always when you go give a divergent duct depending upon the design pressure maintained here, it will go on that will be clear when you will be dealing with the isentropic flow that entirely depends at this pressure that is known as the design pressure when the back pressure this critical condition corresponds to certain pressure here you understand. So, to make the flow through it this pressure is very important. So, this pressure cannot be more than this. So, this pressure is less than that and this pressure has to be set in such a way that there should be undisturbed expansion or undisturbed acceleration in the supersonic region through this duct. There is no other way out. It cannot go to a lower velocity or in the subsonic region. This will be clear, I will discuss this in discussing the isentropic flow. Sir, well, any question please? Sir, at the minimum area, yes. the Mach number be greater than 1? No, so definitely not. Minimum area, again I am telling this from mathematics. So, minimum area where d a is 0, the throat corresponding to again I am telling you, this is a very important concept that at the minimum area throat section which is associated mathematically with d a 0. This is achieved when either Mach is 1 or dv or dp is 0. Well, either Mach is 1 or dv or dp is 0. That means, at the throat section, either Mach number will be 1, either Mach number will be 1. That means, fluid is completely accelerating. That means, from a very low velocity, it is totally accelerating. That means, in the initially it is acceleration in the subsonic region, then supersonic region in between at the throat Mach number 1 or it is total diffusion from a supersonic flow. First, in convergent duct, the diffusion takes place that means, a deceleration takes place, then Mach number 1 reaches, then deceleration takes place okay, in the divergent duct, okay, in the subsonic region with Mach number 1 at the throat. This is one situation that corresponds to the mathematical condition that d a is 0 associated with m a is equal to 1. Otherwise, d a will be 0 without achieving or attaining m a is equal to 1, either d v is 0, d v d p is 0, either not both d v and d p will be 0 simultaneously. So, this is the case when Mach number is not 1, that means either it is less than 1 or it is greater than. That means, in case of less than 1 subsonic flow, the throat area is associated with the maximum velocity or minimum pressure. That is a typical venturi meter, first acceleration then deceleration nozzle and diffuser or in case of a supersonic flow, it is just the reverse. It is first diffuser and then nozzle. That means, first deceleration and then acceleration with the minimum velocity or maximum pressure at the throat. That is the situation mathematically, that is the situation that uh, uh, refers mathematically uh, to the case situation that d a is equal to 0 achieved when d v or d p is 0. But the most interesting question that I will explain to you while we will be deriving the isentropic flow equations that with a convergent divergent duct and the concept of choking that is the very important thing. Then it will be clear that Mach number 1 if you reach from a subsonic flow through a convergent duct Mach number 1 at the throat that means at the minimum area then if you go on increasing the area it cannot go to the subsonic flow it will always go to the supersonic flow. Okay. All right. 
Any question? Thank you.